Okay, we're going to make a tool holder, a milling tool holder from Technics USA. So on their website, if you wanted to follow along, if you don't have one of their products and you just want to use this as a tutorial, you can go to Technics USA, come to Drawings, and basically, you know, download whatever you want here. The link is here uh, at the end of the row. So we're going to go back to Esprit. This is a, uh, I think it's a DWG or a DXF file. Basically it's a print. They don't have solids yet. So we need to create the solid. No big deal. So this is the way that it comes in and my background is white as you can see. So whoever drew this probably had a black background. So it's a little bit hard to see. Uh, but if I do a control A we can see it a little bit better. And looking at this, uh, you know, if you're looking at a different DWG or something, you know, you're going to want to look for the geometry that kind of traces out the shape of the revolved uh, solid model that would represent the tool holder. So in Esprit, to grab connected geometry, we want to hold the shift key, and then we're going to select one of those items of geometry. And when I do that on this particular print, you can see it grabs that outside shape. So I don't need any of these other things. So what I can do now is swap the group. And there's a hotkey for that called Control W. Swap group is Control W. If I do that, you'll see that the profile that I had selected is no longer grouped, but everything else is grouped. So now I'm just going to right click and say delete and now if I control all uh, control A you can see that um, you know that profile is still on the screen. So really actually since I have this grouped I'm going to go to properties and if you don't have properties you can go to home and come here to the end show hide and all of the you know the uh, dialog boxes are listed here. Properties is at the top. Just make sure that this is checked. If this is checked, it will be somewhere on your screen. Um, so here under the properties, I'm going to come to the color and I'm just going to select black so it's easier to see. So that's how you change colors in Esprit. And now uh, this is not where we want it to be. You can see it's out here in space in quadrant one, positive X and Y values. Uh, but typically, you know, the zero point is located at the end of this taper, and it looks like this line is sitting here right on center. So what I'm going to do is come to Manipulation, Move Origin, and select the end of this line, and you can see that that puts it at my zero point. So looking at this geometry, this side, this side has a, a half, you know, the upper and the lower half, and we don't need anything... Uh, else down here. So what I can do is I can window in on this geometry and delete it. We can right click and say delete. And additionally I see there's a little chunk of geometry up here. There's two pieces. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those as well by highlighting on them. You can you can use the control key so I can control and select multiple items and add or remove from the group. So I'm going to pick those two items, right click and say delete. So now I'm left with the profile that I want. So what I'm going to do is actually create my solid model first. So what I want to do to, to revolve this around 360 degrees to make the solid, I need to have a closed shape. So what I need to do is draw a little segment that goes from you know, the top to the bottom of this holder. So we're going to come over to Geometry and I'm going to say let's do a segment and we're just going to pick these two endpoints and that's pretty much it. So you can see that when you uh, do a command down here at the lower left it's always asking you for what uh, element it needs. I'm just going to hit Escape to go back to Choose Next Task and then I'm going to hold my shift key again and I'm going to pick that profile so that it's grouped. So now I'll go to modeling and you can probably tell right away out of these commands that we want to use the revolve command. So 
you know, you want to set this to 360. It defaults to that for me. I don't know what your angle is, so type in 360 there. Uh, reverse direction, yes or no, it doesn't really matter because we're revolving 360 degrees. But here we want to select an axis. So I'm just going to pick uh, the X axis, or you could pick that segment. And now we can see the preview. That looks good. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And we have a solid model. So <clears throat> I'm going back to a top view, an F7 on my keyboard is the hotkey for that. Top view is F7. So looking at, you can see down here my, uh, my X, Y, and Z values. When I put my mouse, you can see that the value for X is 76 inches. So obviously this tool holder is, you know, way too big. Likely it's because this was drawn in metric. I'm in an inch file, so everything is scaled up by 25.4. So you could do a control A or you can window in on everything. I'm going to right click and say copy. I'm going to come over to scale. I'm going to say move. And for the uh, scaling parameters, I want to do one divided by 25.4. And we're going to use the origin because we positioned at the origin. So it's going to keep the location where we want it of that taper. When I say OK, this uh, brings it down into size. And now when I move my mouse over there and it looks like it's three inches, it's pretty much, I think, uh, where we need to be. So the solid model is created. We're good there. But now what we want to do is orient this correctly because currently it's oriented along the X axis. So to do this, we are going to uh, basically select everything on our screen. So we're going to right click and say select all or use the control A. And what we want to do is, you know, I'm going to undo that for a second just so we can see it. The Y axis, we want to rotate this about Y 90 degrees. And if you're familiar with the right hand rule, you could put your thumb on the Y axis and the direction you curl your fingers is going to be positive. So we want a positive 90 degree rotation about Y for this. So we're going to select all. We're going to right click and say copy. I'm going to use rotate move. We're going to put in a positive 90 degrees and we do not want the origin as our rotation point. So uncheck this box. We say OK. Esprit asks us for the center of rotation. I'm going to go ahead and pick the Y axis. And now we can see the tool holder has the Z axis going up into the taper of the spindle. And we are good to go. Now I'm going to hit F4 on my keyboard and go to a you know, ZX view. And we see our XYZ UVW here at the reference position, the zero position of the holder. This is where it will appear in the spindle of our machine. What I want to do now is define the location for where the tool, so if we create a half inch end mill, where do we want it to appear? We don't want it to appear here inside the holder. We want it here at the face of the holder itself. So what I'm going to do is, uh, under manipulation here, we have uh, a bunch of different commands here. We're just going to use the modify work plane command. And you'll see that the uh, UVW kind of gets bigger and has a bunch of stuff on there. I'm just going to go ahead and pick this Z axis. And when I do that, no matter where I move my mouse, it's just going to move, it, it's going to follow along the Z axis. And I'm going to just go ahead and digitize. You can see that when I move my mouse near the center of that face, it's just going to, uh, you know, lock that UVW to that position. Once I put it there, I'm going to come here to the planes. I'm going to select the plus, and I'm going to do a TA underscore one. This is a tool adapter position number one, tool adapter. 
okay? And typically, when you save out this as a simulation solid, it creates a holder adapter position at the same location for you. Uh, just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and do an HA underscore one as well because, uh, actually, I don't remember. I think this is a shrink fit. Uh, you know, if you wanted to put an extender or something in there, uh, you can have that loaded as well. So you have multiple GDMLs before you load the tool. So we've done our TA and our HA, and we're basically done. Now I just want to click elsewhere, make sure nothing is highlighted, and then come to File, Save As, and then save your file wherever you want to keep it on your hard drive. Okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at how this looks on the machine. So here we have a 5-axis uh, Haas UMC 750. We've got a tool loaded in the spindle here. Uh, this is a tool from Meritool. And we're going to swap out the holder for the Technics holder. So if you have an existing holder that you want to swap out, you can just double click on that and edit it by choosing the folder. And you know when you're looking at your, your, your holders here, you can browse to wherever you want, take a look at it. With the preview, this looks nice. Um, what we're going to do here is actually just right-click and add an adaptive item. And we're going to go back to the holders folder and come to Technics. And I've got three of them here. This is the one that we just made. And there it is in the preview. When I say open, the holder appears in the spindle and we can come in here and right click and say you know add a, a milling tool so we're going to add an end mill and you can see i'll just take the defaults here happens to be a half inch end mill and when you do that uh, and you build your tool uh, you'll see it in your spindle with the preview and everything um, you know so you can add it to your existing tool list or edit an existing tool, uh, the holder, to the one that you want. So that is all that you need to do. Hopefully this tutorial helps you make better and more accurate simulations so that you have more effective code going to the shop floor. Let us know if you have any questions or any suggestions for helpful tutorials.